Um, not really sure what all it's going to last as. I mean, outside in the yard, I suppose. I've got my hair loose today, and I'm thinking that in point of fact, it looks better than trying to do something with this short stuff. If I just go ahead and let the hair down. So, you know. I like long hair, but a lot of people are critical of it because I'm supposed to know and pass as a man. Because I'm a transgender and I want to be a man, so why would I do something that makes me look a little more feminine? And uh, I don't see that when I look at it. I see the hair. And uh, I think I've, I've seen so many long-haired men, I know that it's got nothing to do with the length of your hair and everything to do with the shape of your face and the tone of your voice. So I think I think if I can get some hair growing on here. Uh, I guess I could go with for one of those stupid chin strap beards if I had to. I'd like something more along the lines of a Viking braided deal. I was thinking the other day, wouldn't it be amusing to braid this and then braid it into a beard? <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I wonder if this is a fingerprint sensor. Huh. I, t I, um, I removed the lock screen, although if, if I can open it with a fingerprint, if I can just do this and it'll open, that, um, that would work for me. I find this actually too much bother. And most certainly, now what was that number? That too would be a bother. But if all I have to do is just stick my finger on here and boom, I'm in. I'm cool with that, so I might set that up. At any rate, it's got... It's got a nice screen and it's got an interesting effect here where the camera bops down here but you've got the screen on either side of it. You can't really tell when it's unless it's in uh, an app is in full screen mode because it the way it uses it. You see it actually is using that space to give you your notifications. And the screen is um, somewhat longer and slightly wider than my old phone. So that's really nice too. You know, I haven't made, learned to make it do any cool tricks yet. But I do, I do appreciate the crispness. Oh, you can't focus that close. One of the things that I did was I, um, I used a jeweler's loop, a 10X, that you put on your eye and you give it a good look. And I gave it a good look. Now on this one here, when I got magnified enough to see the pixels at all, they still looked like a very fine mesh, um, rather like a, a very fine woven screen, vague texture in the background. It was very, very tiny. Like it was crazy. It was almost not possible to see them with the loop. I would have had to go to a microscope, which is where this will go eventually. I want to get glasses that do that. What I have is I've got driving glasses. Um, that I wear and then I've got these ones here designed for about three feet away from me. In fact they're making this phone a lot sharper for me now. Now I'm actually seeing the sharpness. Now if I do this I can see the difference in the resolution. But the trouble with them is that as soon as we get to a certain point now that you know my fingers for instance cleaning my fingernails I gotta take them. I, it's yeah I'm having trouble. I need to get my eyes checked anyway because I've been getting these flashes that they say are a warning sign of retinal detachment from excessive blood pressure, high blood pressure. So that's, I need to see someone with my eyes. It's been quite a long time. And uh, I want to get these done so that they proceed from distance through to close up and see what that does for me. I have to talk with my optician about, um, what sort of lenses that involves and how they work. But these here, the, these glasses, you know, they'll, they'll do me. They'll do me for a long time. They're neither masculine nor feminine. They're quite gender neutral and they're quite nice and pleasant to look at. And they'll encourage me to dye my hair because these are the colors that I put in my hair. I might have figured because I was already using those colors in my hair, therefore I chose these glasses because they went with it. And the, I really ought to do hair color again. My hair's doing really well. I'm really enjoying and appreciating it. But I haven't because in winter time I've got it all always have it tied up. You never see it anyway. So I thought, well, why bother? Long conversation with a fellow named Kennedy last night. And 
he was really open to learning about trans people. He was very ignorant and, and foolish about it. Um, he said a lot of offensive things without having any awareness that he was being offensive, not because he wanted to cause offense, you know. And I think we need to remember that. We need to remember that there's a difference between those who want to cause offense and then pretend they didn't know better versus those who actually don't know. And I really think most of us can tell. Perhaps some folks get a little too triggered. But so I, I was comfortable with that. And, um, but he, you know, some of the stuff he, I had to teach him a little bit. I did have to do him a little teaching. A little. You know, it was sitting with a stranger in the mall outside the, the theater, uh, waiting for my movie to start. So I did get him to take a selfie with me. And I forgot to tell him my name. It's a really nice way to repair a socket. Want some more? Chicken in broth. The broth is gone. The chickens have gone. It's only a little meal. But my heart is lighter knowing he's eating something. These little dogs can starve so easily. 24 hour fast and his stomach shuts down. How you doing little bud? Yeah? Feeling a little better? You are. I've been looking up um, intrusive thoughts. Um, I heard someone recently say that intrusive thoughts were thoughts that upset you and won't go away, like daymares, like when you're anxious and worrying. Um, it was phrased in such a way that it sounded like um, persistent worries. And so I'm thinking, and, and I, I definitely endure persistent worrying. When, when things are getting to be too much, I start to worry about all of the things that aren't good. Um, you know, all of the things that aren't already resolved start to come to mind. Um, long after I want to stop trying to solve them because I know that I need sleep and I'm not getting anywhere. And so I'm like, you know, I don't want to keep thinking about how am I going to deal with X, Y, or Z. Some of the bigger questions that I don't really talk about on YouTube that are going on in my life that they all just start crowding in. My brain wants to solve at least one of them or all of them or just something, something. It's like my brain is saying, no, no we, we can't quit trying to solve this because this is imminent. This is important. And um, I don't think of that as an intrusive thought. I always thought intrusive thoughts were more along the lines of you're walking past the paper cutter at work and suddenly you have this momentary urge to stick your hand or your finger in it and see if it can chop through your bones. Apropos of nothing, you're just like, oh, you should stick your hand in that cigar cutter. You should stick your finger in that cigar cutter. And see what it does to the tip of your finger. And I go like, where did that stupid idea come from? And I move on. And, um, you know, that's only one example. That's an example that is neat, that is not evil. Sometimes it's evil examples, like you should reach out and trip that old man with a cane. I have not had that one. I have had the paper cutter one, but I have not had, I've, ne I've not had intrusive thoughts that involve causing somebody pain and distress. And uh, I'm glad of that, because that would leave me really questioning myself as um, a compassionate individual. But now I'm starting to get this idea that intrusive thoughts are big worries. And that's interesting. Yes, in fact, I am watching my videos and working on my fabric. And I'm just glad to be working on it again. I've let it go too long.
Was that a good dinner? <laughs> hey, how you doing? It's Saturday. How do you like my hairdo? Pretty awesome, huh? You won't get a hairdo like that in a hair salon. You'd probably kill him if you did. <laughs> I think it looks kind of fun. I started this fabric when I was getting sick. I was getting to where all I could ever do was sit up. I couldn't, I couldn't do things and I wanted to be productive and I was getting so tired all the time and always, in, always with the back aches and I was always sitting. And so I started weaving and this fabric was put on before my cancer diagnosis. This, this is the second warp of this fabric. Just, just, I've already got one full bolt. This one here then was started, um, this particular warp was begun um, in late 2016, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically a fabric that's been five years in the making. And I'm getting near the end of it. Look at how little is left here. Um, yeah, not much. I'll be done, but I might be done today. And look at how much fabric I have. So then when, when this one is off, I'll put it together with the other one, which is currently out in the bus where it's being kept cold to prevent moth, moth damage. And, um, I don't know. Probably going to throw them both in the washing machine on hot so they shrink to full. It's called fulling. It's also known as felting. It's also known as shrinking your wool. And I want to do that with this before I do anything with it. Then we'll see how much fabric I have. I had considered possibly stitching them end to end like a giant blanket, but I really don't know how much. This one's going to be much longer than the other one. So I, I really can't do it that way. I'd have to do a lot of cutting, and I'm not sure what I want to make out of it yet. After it's shrunk and I have a proper idea of how much fabric I have, then I can decide what to make out of it. See? How cool is that? The fabric? The phone! I think I came up with a name for this hairstyle. Evil Clown. <laughs> I started a pot of soup. For the most part, today's another watching videos and weaving day, and I'm kind of feeling like I want to finish my, my, my bolt of fabric. That this is now actually a worthwhile and important way to spend some time. He's not asleep. Maybe. No, he's not asleep. So what do you think? Is he singing along or protesting? <laughs> Beat that last little bit down a little bit, shall we? There you go. Finished fabric. That's a lot of fabric. 
that's the original bolt. It's uh, yeah, half the length of this one. And uh, this is interesting because I thought I laid them out the same, but I obviously didn't. I'm not sure what the difference is. We've got four, and then we've got uh, 20. Oh, and then here we've got four and 10. Oh boy. So what I have is two completely different fabrics in the same color range. How interesting. This white border happened because I ran out of blue. And that's probably also why I changed the, the count. I, you know, I also have these whole sections where I do, um, I do a big chunk of white to mimic the white border. So I'm going to give this fabric, um, at least 24 hours to rest. It's just starting to shrink from the loom. This one, on the other hand, has had a couple of years to rest. And uh, you can see that the, the, the weave is much tighter here than it is here. If you even compare them side by side, you can see that this one hasn't rested long enough. So that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to just fold it up and enjoy it for a while. I put it in um, only a half an hour wash so that it wasn't, I, I didn't want it to shrink too much. I just wanted to tighten the weave, really. Um, I'm kind of torn between should I have made it tight enough to block wind or is a summer weight, it's kind of nice. And you know, I really like it like this. I don't, I don't need it to shrink any more than this and I've got more fabric this way. What I need is to remember when washing it not to just toss it in the wash. I'm just going to have fun with it. I'm just going to go for a craft, artsy craft jacket out of this. I love the feel. Mm, it's so soft and fuzzy. This is the thing we like to do in the mornings. Now, he gets pulled out from over here in the corner until I've got all his food and stuff done. I've got to change his freshies in and stuff. And while he's out here, hanging out, being a bird, gets to watch another bird hang out, being a bird. 
Einstein Parrot on YouTube puts out enough videos that this guy gets to watch. Uh, yeah, that's a camera. Your big beak, you beautiful birdie. Go ahead, bite it. You can take it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've been stitching. I have stitched the sleeves together. I've still got this seam to work on. You can kind of see it's pinned. Um, I did the other sleeve and I put the back together. This is January 31st and I wish to transfer all of the files from the camera to the computer and start editing. I shall wrap up. The last two weeks have included um, a trip to the hospital due to blockage and some really bitterly cold weather that has left me stuck in the house and um, Lots of making stuff. That's what I do when I'm stuck at home. I make things. Yeah, right now I'm cooking up some more broth. What else? Hmm. Well, actually, that, that's it.